Hey guys, have you had a chance to get a copy of my new book, The Ultimate Ron Guide? If you are ready to build a remote online notary business, then this book is what you need. In this book, I give you all the information that you need to know in order to build a successful remote online business, no matter what state you're in, as long as your state authorizes remote online notarizations. Head on over to Amazon today and get your copy. You'll be glad you did. Tired of selling your time to the highest bidder? What's up, guys? It's Necessary here with Notary to Notary, and I'm super excited to be able to teach you how you can build a six figure notary signing agent business. Now, I know you're probably thinking, how can a notary make six figures? I know, right? But you can. I've been doing it since 2016. Not only that, I've been training since 2019 and have tons of student reviews who have done the same. All you have to do is listen to the steps that I'm teaching you in my all-inclusive training at notarytonotary.com. Forbes even called me the top entrepreneur that's changing the way people work today. Sounds good, doesn't it? But in order for you to see those results, you're gonna have to take action. So stop watching this video, click the link below, and go sign up for my training today. You'll be happy that you did. What's up guys? How are we doing this awesome sauce and amazing mon Thursday? <laughs> At least I caught it this time. At least I caught it this time. Right? Are you guys excited? So I decided to do our I Notarize session today on um on uh oh spaghetti. -o on um youtube because i was it was just a lot happening and it just would work out better that way so all right let's do it let's do it let's do it let's do it there we go are you guys excited are you excited are you excited are you excited are you excited Okay, here we go. I was doing like three things at one time, but now I'm ready. Um, all right, let's take this off. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the title of this um, live, which is talking about how um, notaries make so much money. And then we're going to get into the I Notarize circle. Um, so um, if you guys don't know if you're joining for the first time, my name is Vanessa Terry. And I founded Notary to Notary in 2019. I've been a notary since 2014. And I stumbled upon it by Coinky Dink. And it was the best Coinky Dink of my life because it allowed me to um, work for myself, quit my job, um, have my own uh, flexibility in what I was doing. Um, even right now, my one of my youngest sons um, is not feeling 100%. And so it allows me to not have to call into work. And say, oh, I can't, you know, and then you have to explain to your manager why, you know, that always was confusing to me how you can call into a job and say, oh, my kid's sick. And they're, they like try to make excuses for you. I mean, like, like how sick though? Like, so no one, can, you know, it's like, sir, ma'am. <laughs> like, so anyway, I stumbled upon it in 2014. I honestly thought it would just be, you know, like a little side kind of gas money thing. And it just it took off way, you know, faster than I thought, especially when I found loan closings. Um, I went from, you know, just doing general notary work here and there to make, I was working full time at a call center at the time. And I quit my job because I realized I was actually 
missing more money being at work. And so once I quit my job, it was like the best. Oh, my God. How many of y'all quit y'all job already? And y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, it definitely was a different kind of lifestyle. And it's one that I think people don't think is a possibility because you're so used to everybody, um, you know, working at the nine to five or something along those um, terms. And, uh, you know, the idea of not having to work a set schedule, a lot of people are kind of like, wait, what? You know, and so especially when I was about to quit, I know I had a lot of people um, give me, um, I had a lot of people give me a hard time about um, quitting and, um, you know, just like, because I had kids, well, I had my, my when I quit, I think I only had my daughter, I think. And, you know, people will give you a hard time, like, oh, it's not secure, the market, politics, all these things. And so they, you know, would just be really negative Nancy about it. And I, one thing that I always say is, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. If you ask him, to tell you. And um, people always say, are you a real person? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think I'm a real person. Uh, and one of the uh, success stories that I like to share, especially now, is Nakia. So Nakia, um, if you guys hadn't heard, um, she's now a coach with Notary to Notary. So uh, she started with me, I think, probably like almost a year, a little bit over a year ago, um, just interested in what Notary could do. And so she joined all the training. She went into the coaching program, you know, doing this thing full time, making, you know, lots of money. OK. And then from there, kind of just um, we started doing um, events with me, like, you know, training and stuff. And so now she actually works um, as a part of the team, you know, coaching and showing other people that it can be done. You know, um, Angel the same way came on notary. And now he works with us. Um it just is, it's just interesting. And Anastasia, same thing, has her own, you know, st started off um, attending a conference in Richmond. We had notary, somebody had a conference in Richmond. And uh, from there, you know, just staying connected, you know, she did the training, she did the coaching, you know, really building her business. And now she works a part of the team, helping people, you know, do the same thing. And so a lot of people, they, they hear notary and they're like, you can't make money as a notary and that's okay, darling, right? I'll keep on making all the money. I'm perfectly fine with that. But if you are open-minded and you are willing to learn and put in the work, you can definitely make great money as a notary. And so the thing about that is uh, there's three tiers to notary work that I primarily talk about. And that's general notary work, loan closing, and e-notary. So general notary work is basically when people in your um, regular, like just community call you to do wills, power of attorneys. Um, and that's what I was doing a lot of in the beginning before I found loan closings. Um, I found, and this is why it's really important to study your market, to study your clientele. When you start getting phone calls, make notes of where they're coming from. You know, one company that I always, always talk about, first of all, because I love, I didn't even, okay, I love this company before I even knew the owner of the company. And now that I know the owner of the company and we're like besties, it's just like it makes it even, you know, sweeter to promote it. And so the company that I was talk I'm talking about, of course, is Notary Assist. I love me some Sue, y'all. If you have not seen Sue Hope, you are missing it, honey. She is a ball of energy just like me. And I love her vibes. And so the link for Notary Assist is in the chat. And so I started using Notary Assist to um, keep track of all of my closings, keep track of, before my closings, I kept track of my clients. And I started to see that I was getting a lot of calls from hospitals and nursing facilities. And so I started to tunnel all of my marketing to hospitals and nursing facilities. If you market to them, highly recommend you go to the social worker gem for you. Okay. So the social worker at these facilities are the, is usually the person that's responsible for helping the client, the patients in the facility get their wills, their medical directors and their power of attorneys amongst other things. But they're the ones who are with the client or the patient in the room and, you know, trying to help them with insurance, whatever that's going on. And then they say, Hey, do you have a power of attorney? No, let me go find somebody for you. And that's who I always give my cards to. And I make those connections with because then they call me and say, Hey, can you come back out and do this uh, power attorney really quick. And then you build a relationship with that establishment and they call you consistently. Um, so I started doing that, found out about loan closings. Now, loan closings are real estate transactions. They're um, refinances, purchases, um, HELOCs, seller sides, loan modifications, and reverse mortgages. Okay. And people always say, even like when the market was crashing, guess what? People are selling. There's always sellers. There's always buyers. There's always 
home equity lines of credit. There's always loan modifications. Like there's always property moving. Something is happening with property at all times. Okay. And so um, loan, people always say like the market is oversaturated. It's not. Okay. If you are great at what you do, you'll always have work. Okay. I've never had an issue where I didn't, where I didn't have, ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, I got some good news. Uh, I never had an issue where I didn't have um, I didn't have enough work. The only time I ever say it was a little bit slow would be like December. I noticed some some slower months in December, um, but I mean it was a slower time in December. But I mean it wasn't anything that was like you know put me out of out of work and now I'm like struggling. So um, it's always work. And then there's Ron. So Ron. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today is I notarize. So Ron is working um, as an e-notary. So that's remote online notarizations. And that's where um, you're able to notarize documentation on a technology device from home as long as well, from wherever you are, really, as long as you're in your commission state. And um, that saw a really big boom once COVID hit. So once COVID hit, you guys know we started, you know, working from home. Everyone was, you know, laid off or whatever the case was, and everything was like trying to, you know, keep everybody social distance. And in that happening, it surged remote online notarization, okay? And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But if you have questions in general about um, how to make money as a notary, you can definitely put it in the chat. Um, I would definitely say, if I were to give you three things that I would recommend a new notary coming into the industry, I would recommend is work your business like a business. A lot of times we, are so used to being under a manager telling us what to do that when we are in charge and there's no one to check us, we half step. I did that the first time I quit my job, which wasn't to be a notary, was anything else. I quit my job and I lollygagged a lot until I ran out of money and I had to go back to work. Okay. Because you have to kind of get into your mind that no one's going to tell you what to do. No one's going to tell you that you have to pull, you know, go to more title companies. You have to do more marketing. You have to pull in like seven more signings um, this week or 10 more signs this week just to hit your budget to make sure you can get your bills paid. You know what I'm saying? No one's going to do that. So you have to be that manager to you. So work your business like a business is first. Second, ignore the naysayers because there's going to be a lot of people who tell you, oh, the market's, you know, oversatur under oversaturated or it's not, you know, it's, it's not secure or you can't make money, or even the, the big ones are like, and it's funny because I used to, now no one says that to me, because I think it's because of how established that I am, that I've been able to grow, thank God, where I am now. But when I was growing in the beginning, I had a lot of notaries who were actual notaries and i would tell them the kind of money that i was making i was like i can show you and they would like be so serious I and mean, like that's impossible i've been a notary for 10 years well honey you've been a notary for 10 years doing it wrong right and so but people were so serious like no that how many times have you seen that on social media or on facebook or even people in your in your family or in your community that say well you cannot make the kind of money i've been a notary for 10 years or five years or 20 years and you cannot make the kind of money right it's just like you don't know how to make that kind of money don't tell me what i can do you just didn't know how that's the people who like get into sales like realtors there are some realtors who get into real become a realtor and there's some who make no money there's some who make some money and there's some who kill the game, right? Destroy it, completely demolish the game, right? But it's because what that person knows. And so if it, it's not just what you know, it's what you apply as well. So you have to know it and you have to apply it. I mean, uh, education serves you no good if you don't apply it. Education needs application, period, right? And so you have to be careful um, who you talk to and who you allow to tell you what you can and cannot do. Um, no one can tell me what I can't do. And I hope you guys get to that space too, where you just decide that I'm going to do this because I said so. And ma'am, so what? Okay. Um, the third thing I would say is definitely, um, get some training. And the reason why I say that is because I, when I became a successful notary signing agent, I didn't have any training and I still did it, but it took me longer. And it's funny because it, it took me probably like close to two years to really, I think I started 2014. I quit my job in 2016. So it took me two years to figure out this game. If it, it took me two years to figure out the hustle. It took me two years to quit my job and have enough money to sustain and that, you know, have that time freedom. It took me two years to do that. 
the reason why it took me two years is because I didn't understand the value of training. I didn't understand the value of mentorship. And so I didn't take anybody's training. I didn't get find a mentor. I did everything by myself. I was YouTube. I was um, trial and error. And so I made a lot of mistakes. I made a whole lot of mistakes. And that's why it took me so long. But that's why when I look at some of my students who get into it and they're quitting their jobs in three, four months, it's like, man, if I had me in 2014, honey, I'd have been good, right? But I didn't. It wasn't necessarily that I didn't. I would say, honestly, in 2014, I wasn't where I am as far as self-development. Like, in 2014, I truly did not understand the value of paying for education, right? A lot of us, we go to school, we pay for college, and after that, we don't really see the value in paying for more education. Like, you know, it's not... It's usually like once you hit your 20s, like after college, you're kind of like, OK, I'm done learning. And that's kind of the the uh, the kind of mold that happens in America, you know, and so we stop learning. And so we don't really put a value on paying for coaches, paying for trainings, paying for books. And so when in 2014, that's where my mindset was. Like I wasn't about to drop a thousand dollars on a training. But if you ask me now, honey, I'll drop whatever it needs to be if I see the value in the training. And so what, what I how I say that something is valuable is if you have the results I'm looking for. If you have the results I'm looking for, oh, it's a quote. I'm going to share it with y'all because I just read it in a book. OK, I'm telling you, I'm always reading now because now I understand the value in reading. Right. So I read all the time now. Like I was up last night because I couldn't. OK, wait, stop following people who are <laughs> stop following people who are telling you what they used to do. That was in the book, too. Um, <laughs> ah, hold on. Let me tell you what I wanted to show you. Um. A friendly reminder that you will never be correct. These are just notes. These are quotes that I have in my phone from books that I've read. A friendly reminder that you will never be criticized by someone doing more than you, only by someone doing less. People's judgments of the world are more so a confession of their own character than an actual representation of the things they blame. That wasn't the quote I was looking for, though. The quote I was looking for was the one that, um, man, it was so good. Um, I got to find it. That's okay. When I find it, I'll put it out on social media. Mind over mattress. Some of you guys can't wake up in the morning because you love your mattress. Like you love how your bed feels. Um, man, I got to find it. But it was really good. It was a really good quote, but I don't know where I put it at. Um, the four hour work, work week is really good. That's by Tim Ferriss. I love his content too. So, um, but yeah, so I, in 2014, I didn't see the value in um paying a couple hundred dollars for a training i didn't see that i was just like man you know what i could do with a couple hundred dollars even when i was making money i was making money i, I still didn't see i don't think i really started to pour into um money into training until probably like 2016 2017 now in 2015 the end of 2015 more like 2016 i really started to get into like motivational content. And I would listen to YouTube videos. You guys know Eric Thomas, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, um, all of them, I would binge listen to it. And so it started to shift my mind. And I realized the way that I was thinking this whole time was broken. And that's why I'm getting the results that I have. And so the, everything that you have, when you realize that everything that you have, you've created for yourself, right? So once you take ownership of your life, you can fix it. But if you're waiting for people to tell you, if you're waiting and to say, oh, well, my mom or my dad or my husband or my best friend or my manager or the president, if you're putting blame on other people, it kind of shifts the responsibility for them to fix your life. They got their own life to fix. They don't worry about you. OK, so once you say I put me here, then you can fix. And I say it all the time. I always tell everybody to say this. I put me here. And I know sometimes it's hard to say if if you right now feel like, that is a hard thing for me to say. That's because the decision that you made may not have been the best decisions, but it's when you can actually own that, you can start to fix it. So I want all of you guys to say, I put me here. Wherever that is, whatever your current situation is, I put me here. Whether that's through your actions, through your thoughts, through your associations, through your choices, you put yourself where you currently are. And the only way to improve your situation is to change and make, change and make different choices going forward. OK, so 2014, I started, but it took me two years, guys. It took me two years to be able to get from 
finding notary to quitting my job and do it full time and having that income that I wanted. It took me two years. Now it doesn't have to take you two years because you have resources. And if, but if, if you're in that same mindset that I was in, in in 2014, it may take you two years because then you might say, well, I don't see the value in paying for training. I don't see the value in getting mentors. I don't see the value in putting money into myself. And it, when I say it out loud, you're probably like, well, I do. I get my nails done and, you know, da, da, da. But I mean, putting money into your brain, right? A lot of people, we don't put value into us. Like you're like you should like the money. Money is a tool. Right. It's a resource that you can use to improve your life. Right. And so, yes, you can spend money on food. But guess what? After you eat that in a couple hours, you're going to have to eat again because it's, it's always going to be changing. You can buy clothes. But guess what? In a couple of years, it's going to go bad. Right. But you're never going to lose what you learn. Once you learn something is in there. Right. And so that's why I'm so much more um, hungry for information and knowledge, especially when you realize, y'all, I'm, I'm not going to stay on this real long. When you realize that the majority of the things that you have been taught your entire life is wrong, okay? And you probably like, a lot of people have no idea that what they've been taught their entire life is wrong or the harder way to do something. And so once I started to see that there were easier ways to do things and I'm doing it the harder way and people over here are making a ton of money or for hardly no effort, you know, like it's so much easier ways to live a more fulfilling life. And once I saw that, it was like, yo, it's like the Matrix, no lie. Like, I don't know how many of you guys seen the Matrix as like a an action movie. No, the Matrix is a real movie. Like, and I'm not trying to get all conspiracy theory on you, but it's real. It literally is like the it's like People walk around with their eyes completely closed. Like you don't even know that you're like the walking dead. People say it's a, it's a guy listen to, he says that, like a zombie, like you're not even alive. You don't even realize that what you think is real and the choices that you think you have to you, it's just like, this is all I can do. When you really can do absolutely anything you decide. But once I started to realize that everything that I was being told my whole life was wrong, <laughs> it made me mad. But I used that anger. It was like, you ain't gonna get me again. It was like, okay. And I just became so focused on learning. That's it. I wanted to learn. If you had the results that I wanted, honey, I was going to your conference. I was emailing you. I was calling you. I'm reading everybody's books. I'm listening to everybody's podcast. I'm listening to, if you had the results I'm looking for. Like I was talking to somebody recently and they were like, oh, did you see this, this show on Netflix? Um, what's it called? I don't know. Some popular show making goods in. And I was like, no. And they were like, oh no, did you see this one? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, I said, yeah, I don't, I don't really watch TV because I don't like I can, my when you ask me why what my favorite show is, is Scandal and Grey's Anatomy. Who remembers when Scandal and Grey's Anatomy came out? That's the last time I really sat down and was like watching TV for no reason. Okay. I don't remember when that came out. But that's the years. Those were the years when I was just binge watching Netflix and stuff. So whenever that was, that's the last the last show that I can say I honestly binge watched was what's that one with the dragons? Winter is coming. What's that show? Winter is coming. That was around that time I was still watching TV. After that, it's 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 very far and in between. I just I, it's not appealing to me. I, it's, I feel like it's a waste of time. Now, I still go to the movies. I like the movie for the experience. I like being in the movie theater, but I don't just sit down and binge watch Netflix unless I'm watching a documentary or something that's edited. Game of Thrones. Thank you. That's the last time I actually sat down and binge watched something. Um, but that was it because it's just like, it's not, it's, it's, I feel like it's a waste. Like I can sit there. Now, there are certain times where I will watch TV, you know, but it's not, I mean, it's, you know, it's very few and in between. It's not like, oh, do you see this new show? Oh, do you see this new show? Oh, you see this new show? Oh, you see this new show? No, we're not doing that. I, I catch one every once in a while. I mean, the last one that I watched that was recent, the last recent show that I, Bridgerton, that was the last recent one I watched. But that's it. Like, I mean, I could probably... I think I might have been the only show that I watched. And everybody else, like, you haven't seen you? No, I hear everybody talking about it. You haven't seen 
What's some other ones that y'all know? Because y'all, I be seeing people on Facebook like, oh, what? I need another show to binge watch. So I be seeing y'all conversations, but it's just not me because I'm not doing that. When I sit down and watch them on TV, I feel like I'm wasting my life. Not, not in a bad way. Um, I do watch Disney, so but I watch it as a movie theater. Mm, mm, mm. So I did see Encanto. I did see that. But my point is, I don't just binge watch, sit down and watch TV all day. It's too, I like I prefer like to audiobook or to read. A lot of them have YouTube playing. Like this morning, I was listening to Amazon KDP. I was listening to a bunch of content of people who do and who sell books on Amazon. And so I was listening to, you know, different this Amazon features. And so I probably spent probably four hours this morning just listening to content about um, Amazon, Amazon Marketplace, Amazon KDP, and then Amazon, a few of the Amazon sellers. And then Amazon actually does have a um, black excellence grant program. If you sell on Amazon and you're African-American, they do have a grant program. They kind of pay you for different things. Um, I don't know if it's an accelerator program, but that exists. So I did find that. Um, I did some more research on that today. So if you do sell on Amazon and you're African-American, if you're African-American, they do have that program. Go check it out. Just Google Amazon um, African-American grant program. It should come up for sellers if you sell on Amazon. Okay. Um, anyway, so that's what I was doing for four hours. I don't mind doing that. And that's one thing that makes a difference. It's like when you don't know something, take time to study it. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't know how to do that. Have you tried? Have you tried? And then for how long before you quit and say, okay, it's not for me. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so let's talk about I Notarize. So let me kind of get you into where this is. So from 2014, I started. 2016, I quit my job, went full time as a notary signing agent. And then um, in 2019, I started on time. I started Notary to Notary, which is a notary training company. And then in 2020, I started on time notary, which is my notary signing service, which was where um put that in the Empire Builders page. Which one? The, the Amazon KDP? That was a lot. It was a lot of different videos. It was a lot of videos, but I can plug some into Empire Builders for you guys. Um, I started on time notary, which is my notary signing service. And then because at that point, I mean, at that, I was still doing loan closings, but with um, notary to notary taking off, okay, with notary to notary taking off, it was just like, I couldn't really do as many loan closings as I used to do. And then I was like, well, I don't want to just give all this money. And that, and then I started to have more reach and I was getting tired of coming across the country. So I built on-time notary. And so yes, on-time notary is my signing service. Go to signingorder.com. So you can create a profile if you already have one and you'll get a text message when we have orders in your area. Um, and so that got built then. And then we've been moving like that. Last year I made Forbes. So last year I made the Forbes Next 1000 um, Entrepreneur. Um, what's it called? Forbes Next 1000 Entrepreneur to look out for. That's changing the way people work. Um, so it's a list of a thousand entrepreneurs that Forbes had to look all across the country and interview. And it was a lot of questions and all that stuff when they um, reached out to me and then they pick a thousand entrepreneurs uh, um, from across the country that says you guys are the next one, you know, you guys are doing big things and, and it's a whole lot. But yes, yeah, so that was really fun. That was exciting. Uh, I definitely almost, I think I did cry. I was like, oh my God, it was fun. It was fun. That was fun. Um, definitely was, a, it was an experience, but from then definitely have gotten a lot more resources and connections and um, just a lot more information and, um, decided to build an e-notary platform. And so the reason for doing that was everything was going, you know, notary training is taking off, the signing service is taking off. And so I was like, I saw COVID. And so when COVID hit, remote online notarization skyrocketed, right? So they went from, I think there were only like six states that had Ron and it was, um, it was, uh, what was it? It was six states that had Ron. Virginia had started it. And then when COVID hit, it jumped from like, now almost all states have it. It's like over 500% increase of remote online online notarization, notarizations that are completed. And then not only that, you just got, you kind of have to study the market and see what's happening. That comes from reading a lot and like studying the market. And also guys, when you're studying the market, don't just look at our market in the United States. A lot of a lot of our economy is affected by other countries' economies as well. And that's something that I'm learning. Um, a lot of times we don't look at other countries' economies. We just look at ours. And then we're kind of like hit, like looking crazy because we didn't know what was happening. Like this shortage, 
that's happening now, you would have known if you were looking into like everything that was happening in China and their, you know, the communication that they've been having with the United States and like, you know, things like that. So just, and then foreseeing that, you know, seeing, oh, okay, so this is happening in China with the shortage, all that stuff like that. So then you can foresee, okay, well, we're going to have a shortage here. But it's not just that. It's a lot of different things you should just be aware of um, when it comes on the global scale to help you, you know, in America. And it also helps open your eyes too, just to, just to see everything that's going on. Like you have a lot of resources here um, in America. And I was talking to um, somebody that I met that was immigrant from Russia that's very successful. And they were just basically telling me that, you know, a lot of times Americans are not successful, like not wealthy. Um, and immigrants come to this country and they make, they kill it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They kill it. They come here and they're here for like three months. They have a whole corner store or a whole restaurant or a whole whatever. And the thing is, is because they see the value in the free resources that we have and we don't take advantage of. And I talk about that a lot when it comes to like libraries, like the fact that we have a library in every, almost every city and county is a publicly, fu I mean, a federally funded or state funded, completely free library full of books. But how many of us actually go to the library, you know, and take advantage of all the information, but you'll be quick to say, oh, I don't know. When you have a whole free resources right here that can help you with something. And he was just explaining to me, like, not just that, there are just so many resources that are here. We talk about SCORE. SCORE is a completely free government agency um, that provides free business mentorship, like completely free across the country. Like in every state, there's a SCORE office that is there to help you build a business, no matter what business it is. Like, and it's free mentorship. You have the SBA, again, free mentorship. Like there's so many resources that are in this country that are available to all of us and then but a lot of times we just you know when you give someone when you give something something for free a lot of times we take it for granted and we just don't appreciate it the same way uh that kind of helps you out with that but my point is uh you can definitely be successful you can it just comes to changing your mindset changing who you're hanging around you know definitely traveling super 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 important that you travel okay so you can start to you know get out of that what you've always been taught you know and then expose yourself to more so you can see okay maybe this is not the only way i can do something i can do something different because prior to you seeing me or someone else online maybe you had no idea that notaries can make six figures right so you had to be exposed to that and the only way you're going to be exposed to things is if you travel if you do new things if you see new people meet new people Okay, stop associating with the same people that you've known since high school. Okay, yeah, they're cool, but they're like a billion people on this planet. So you should not like make more friends, you know, make more connections, network, period. Okay, there's a quote that is very true that says your net worth is equal to your network. Okay, you how many times have you gotten a deal or you got, you know, someone looked out or something happened just off of the strength of you knowing somebody and not for the money that was in your pocket? Like, that's a real thing, you know, that, that you need to build. I know that I've had a lot of people look out for me in different arenas, especially in business, because I know somebody like, oh, you, I got somebody say less because we had that connection. Right. So networking is really, really important. OK, I know to rise. Let's talk about it. So um, this year, well, we actually started last year on building the e-notary platform. It's called I Notarize. OK, so I Notarize is I Notarize dot com. And I'll kind of show you the website really quick quick um so i decided to build this um last year and we started development probably like in i think september we started working on it and really what it is is if you're completely a, um not aware of what ron is it's basically a remote online notarization and so you never want to do it on a facetime a zoom a skype nothing like that you want to make sure you're actually doing it on an approved e-notary platform and so that's what I Notarize is. So there's a couple other platforms out there to kind of give you an idea. So like Notarize, Doc Verify, Secure It Signing, Cyberize It. Um, there's probably about a handful, probably about 10, probably between like five to 10 that are out there. And mind you, before COVID, it probably was like closer to five. So now within about two years, five more platforms have popped up, okay? And so it's gonna take over, it's going to expand. Um, if you have any friends that are in real estate or you know mortgage um, lending or things like that, you can definitely talk to them and they can vouch for the fact that loan closings are going to be going remote online notary, period, right? Now, of course, there'll always be in-persons, but for the most part, um, a, a large portion of that is going to be happening online, okay? 
Um, and that, I gave an example the other day about how a lot of people use Instacart now instead of shopping online or how we don't buy DVDs or VHSs anymore. And now we stream everything it's like Netflix, Hulu, things like that. And so technology will shift. And even when we get to phones, and it was so crazy, y'all. If you think about like 10, 10 to 12, how old am I? Probably like 11, 12, 13 years ago. I didn't have a phone. I, I did. I had a little old, you know, old little flip phones. And if you talk to people, talk to people who were like 10 years ago, they didn't take their phone with them everywhere. Why? It didn't do anything. Like all you could do is make phone calls and then you could text, right? And so people didn't have phones all the time. People still had house phones, right? 10 years ago. And now you can't take a phone from somebody, right? Everywhere you go. I got on a plane, I think like two weeks ago, dead serious. And I was walking on the plane. And everybody was sitting down and literally everybody on the on the plane had their phone in their hand. Every single human being that was sitting down had their phone in their hand. And it was so interesting. One, if you're in business besides notary or just business in general, you need to be marketing so on social media or with mobile marketing, period, because everybody is on their phone all day and so if you do not market in a way that people can see what you're selling on your phone you're already behind okay so side note tell a friend and tell a friend okay but then i was like yo everybody's on their phone you and people will people will drive to their job and come all the way back home because they left their phone people will have a whole bad day like their day will be completely destroyed if they leave their phone at home if they crack their screen if they lose their phone like it went from no one having a phone to you not being able to live without a phone so that that's why I kind of want you guys to get like markets will shift, markets will sh will change. Technology is going to take the way. Right now, everybody, how many y'all hear about NFTs and Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? And you're like, eh, it'll pass. It's a scam. I'm that word, honey. It's not going nowhere, in my opinion. In my opinion, I don't think it's going nowhere. Um, it's, it's too heavily invested into by by a lot of major plays not going anywhere. But it's one of those things that reminds me, I was looking at an article um, earlier today and it was saying, it was an article was written by some paper, it was a major paper. It was probably like, I don't know, 20 or 15 years ago. It was like right when AOL was out, I forgot the year, but it was saying how the internet was a fad and it'll pass. And look at us now. OK, so my thing is just when you hear new things, don't assume that it's going to pass because you don't want to do the research and learn it. OK, don't get so caught up in what you've always done that you end up being like, you know, and I say it, but it's sad. A lot of people who are older in their 60s, 70s, 80s who, you know, can't really make it in this workforce now because they don't know how to use basic technology because they never took the time to learn. it. And it's not to say that. Oh, it wasn't around for them to learn. No, when it came out, there was always a chance for you to learn it. It's always an opportunity. Even now, you can still learn it. It's a choice. You can choose to learn the technology, learn the advancements, learn what's coming out. Like right now, how many of you guys don't use social media? Because in your mind, you don't know how to do it. But you have kids, you have nieces and nephews who's on there all day who can show you willingly, willingly. But it's a choice. You're deciding I don't want to use social media because it's not what I'm used to. I don't want to use TikTok. I don't want to learn how to use Instagram. I don't want to learn. Meanwhile, kids out here on YouTube making whole six figures to millions of dollars playing with slime and toys, but you working a job that you can't stand making $15 an hour working 40 hours a week because you refuse to improve on your skill set to match what the economy is looking for. It's a choice. You can choose to continue to live the life that you're living, but don't complain about it. Don't complain about your job and your life when you're making a choice to do that. You're choosing to not improve your skill set. That's a choice. You are choosing this. Period. Okay. So let's hop into I know um, I notarize. So I notarize is an e-notary platform, and mind you, I have no idea how to build a technology platform. Okay, but I didn't let that stop me. I found somebody who knew what they were doing, who had experience, who had the results that I wanted. And I said, okay, teach me, right? I can sit back easily and say, I can tell you right now, I can't code to save my life. I have no idea about a code, a one, a two, a zero. I don't know, but I'm not gonna let that stop me because I know for a fact to me, a fact to me, long closes, in-person long closes is not gonna hang on that long. I mean, you might get a couple more years, maybe, 
but it's going to transition. And so, yes, I can continue to be, you know, do wrongs, but let me not, why not maximize on the wrong? Let me go ahead and build a platform because I want to maximize on my earning potential, right? And so I went to find somebody who knew what I was taught, who knew what I wanted that can teach me and help me get the goals that I'm looking for and not just saying, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not in the tech space. I don't know how to build software, right? Like I can do that. But the reality is you didn't know how to drive either. And you learned that. How many things you did not? That's like, it's the, the perfect quote. It's like when people have kids and how many times would you let your kid try to walk before you say, you know what? You can't do it. Just sit down. None, right? Because in your mind, you're like, yo, you got to walk. Like, that's a thing, right? But you don't do that for yourself later in life because you're like, eh, I don't have to do that. Everybody else is miserable, right? This is okay. Everybody, no one, how many people work a job right there where you're not the only person at your job that doesn't like your job and y'all sit at y'all job and y'all talk about how much I don't like y'all job every day? That's what I'm talking about. You do it because it's comfortable, because everybody else is doing it. And so you're like, oh, well, everybody else doing it. Yeah, you know, I don't like her. Mm -mm, I'm going to take an extra long break today. I ain't coming in tomorrow. You know what I'm talking about, okay? Y'all know what I'm talking about. It, you're doing it because you're surrounding people who are also doing it. That's why. Let me get to my point. My point was, I notarize. And then I'll hit some of your comments, too, in a second, okay? So I notarize the e-notary platform. And um, it is set to launch in the spring. So um, what is this, January? So probably like around April, you'll probably see it um, launch officially where you can actually use the platform. So we're actually almost done with development, um, designing. So it's kind of, there's a couple of different levels that goes into building a, a, a software platform in general. There's designing, there's building, and then there's um, testing and then more um fixing of those tests and so there's a couple different phases of it but we're pretty much done with the designing piece there's a couple more probably like a probably like two or three more weeks at the most of designing and so we are gonna I'm, i am going to ask you guys for some feedback in just a second um and then the we do have a founder circle so the founder circle is here so first let me tell you what i notarize it's me and a team of builders including luke who's the head builder um, and so Luke's really, really smart. I always shot him out. He's really cool. I, I love his vibes. I like happy people. That's my thing. I love happy people who are just like, let's try it. Let's shoot our shot. Let's go for it. Let's go. Let's go bigger, go home. And so um, we decided to build I Notarize. And so um, we did start a founder circle. So it's a, a notary platform. Finally, finally, a notary platform built by notaries. And so we started a founder circle. And so a founder circle is basically like a Kickstarter. So a Kickstarter is basically, how many of you guys ever gave to a Kickstarter? And you know what I'm talking about. Um, so Kickstarter is basically when a new company or a new product is about to launch. They look for support from, um, from just regular people. So their audience or people that are interested in the product, things like that, that will support a product that they're or a company they're interested in. Okay, and so this is a Kickstarter. So it's not like we're, um, you were kind of getting confused with what a founder circle is, but think of it like a Kickstarter, okay? And so we have three different levels you can join and the founder circle actually is gonna close probably by the 30th for sure, but probably will close a little sooner than that. It just depends on when we hit our goal. But so the founder circle is where you can join at different levels and you get certain things back from the platform, okay? So the, on the silver level, it's $250 and you don't pay any fees except for KBAs. If you're new to Ron and you don't know what KBAs are, KBAs are a knowledge-based authentication process that most states require for you to be able to actually verify a signer's identity. And every platform charges for it, okay? And we had a training the notary boot camp yesterday. Was it yesterday where we were talking about KBAs, right? So KBAs are basically where um, they screen you. You know how when you apply for a credit card and they ask you like those questions like, which one of these streets are you associated with? You have a mortgage payment, how much is it? Or uh, which one of these people do you know? That's a KBA, okay? And so that's one thing that you can use to verify a signer's identity, okay? And every platform right now charges for a KBA. OK, and so the KBAs are fees that vary it depends on the platform. It could be anywhere from like the most I think I've seen. I could be wrong. The most I've seen is five dollars. But you do a KBA for each signer. So let's say 
you have two signers on a loan closing. You would pay $10 for that KBA of, in addition to other fees. How many of you guys were in the notary boot camp yesterday when we broke down the fees that go along with remote online notarizations? And that's one thing I always get people kind of, they like, oh, I want to get into ROM and they, they start using platforms, but then they, they don't under, they don't really see their profitability because they don't understand the fees to that are calculated. So there are a lot of different fees. They're like KBAs, they're e-notary seal fees, they're ID credentialing fees, there's document fees, there's video storage fees. Um, there's a lot of different fees, right? And so different platforms have different fees for different things. So when you join iNotarize in the founder circle, okay, there's no fees. The processing fees are all the fees that we may charge to use the platform. On a silver level, you don't pay any of those fees except for the KBA. So on the silver level, you'll still be paying your KBA for each identity that you need verified. We get needs a KBA for one year after launch. So you get that perk, that benefit for one year after we launch into your state, okay? Plus the exclusive benefits and those things listed below. Okay, on the gold level, you don't have to pay processing or platform fees or KBAs for two years. So basically what that means is you're not paying for any fees to use the platform for two years after we launch in your state. Okay, so let's say when we launch in April, of course, we're going to launch in Virginia. Let's say you're in Florida and we don't come to Florida till September. Your year doesn't start until September. And so everybody that's in Florida, that's in the founder circle, will get an email probably a phone call depending on which of how many y'all it is and say hey we're live in florida now so your year starts you can use or your two year starts you can use you can use i notarize completely free and so that is basically a game changer because when you're bringing on e-notary clients onto a platform the entire thing is profit you're not paying for anything everything is just is cash in right now if you use anybody's platform you're paying money for that like period and for the record <laughs> let me make sure i make this known after when we launch if you're not in the founder circle there are there will be fees to use the platform and that's because we have to make money too like we have to actually you know keep this baby alive right so every e notary platform charges a fee to use it in order to conduct e notarizations okay and then on the platinum level you don't pay processing fees at all for the lifetime usage of the of the um platform so basically what that means is if you join the platinum level you don't pay notary seal fees you don't pay document fees you don't pay video storage fees you don't pay kba fees you don't pay any fees for um life as long as when as far as long as you use the um platform right and so that's a part of the founder circle okay and so when you join the platinum level it doesn't matter when we launch in your state because you have it for forever right and so once this closes out which right now is probably said to close it's going to close before the end of january we're going to send out an email it'll probably be like a three to four day heads up like hey we're about to close the um the platform the founder circle so if you're in, you know and if you have an open invoice there's people who have open invoices you just know that if you have to pay up whatever level you're paid up to is the level you'll stay on okay so whatever level you're paid up to when we close out is where your state where you will be on does that make sense where you will be on <laughs> on your level right um so yeah so that's it any questions about that okay so the next thing we're going to talk about is we have a few questions that we want to know the i notarized team getting feedback from you guys because we had we hit a few more sections that we like we want to make sure this platform is the best platform in the country and so that being said we're getting feedback not from, from notaries from title reps from mortgage industry leaders from other businesses and from basic individuals so we can make sure that we have the most user friendly and optimized platform that there is so that everybody can use it and it works perfectly great okay if you're gonna do it you might as well do a big right and it has some really cool surprise features but i can't tell you because it's gonna be a surprise i'm excited okay y'all know i'm really creative all right so let's hit some questions really quick and then we will ask a few questions from you guys let's see hey unlimited dj how realistic is it to make three thousand my first month license you can do it if you grind like anything is possible i mean how many times have you not been able to make money like it, this is really it's, this is a true statement this is a true statement how many times have you you know been working paycheck to paycheck paycheck to paycheck and you like barely making it but you do every month paycheck to paycheck and then some major happen like your car breaks down or you got to come up with like $2,000, something major. And then guess what? You Most of the time you figure it out, right? Because 
as humans, we don't get what we want. We get what we have to have. And so if you are determined, like over hell and high water, and the other thing is we don't get what we want. We get our standards, right? And so if your standard is I will always have a car and I will always have a place to live, you will always have one. If your standard is all my bills will always be paid at least a month in advance, that will happen. If your standard is my bills will always be paid, they could be late though, but they'll always be paid, that will happen. Right. So if you're in your if you made it in your mind, like I'm gonna make three thousand dollars because I need to make it, then your grind gotta be there. You can do anything you set your mind to, but you can't say I want to make three thousand dollars and your your hustle not there. Like you you watching Netflix and chilling. That's not that's not gonna work. That's not productive. That's not how that really works. You know what I'm saying? When you really have a target that you're really desperate for, you think about it all day right? Your actions are moving towards it all day. And so if you are in that space, you can most definitely do it for sure. For sure. Okay. Getting my platinum today. Awesome. I love it. Welcome to the founder circle. How do you get started building your own signing company? Also, when first starting off, how do you let signing companies know you need or want the day off getting? So you do not get blacklisted for not accepting work. That's not a thing. OK, I don't know if people keep saying that. Not you, but people keep saying that. That's not a thing. Signing companies assume that notaries are busy because most signings, most. Oh, look, Amrock sent me an order. Um, OK, um, I'm sorry. Um, most signing companies assume that you work with more than one signing company. So if you don't take an order, they just assume that you're probably busy. You're taking something, you're doing something else. It's not a bad thing. Um, how do you get started building your own signing service? I have a training at notarytonor.com that breaks down how to build your own signing service. You can go take that training and it walks you through the step by step. So that way you have everything that you need. I was going to, but apparently I was removed while I was short dis disability. I saw thank you for that push. What happened, Evan? I missed your comment. Much than I said before. Oh, oh you gotta quit. I would love to quit my job now, but I have to make sure my finances are secure first. But I want this to be a birthday gift to myself. I love it. What's the best way to get your name out there for work? It's a lot of ways. Um, Google business page, signing with companies, marketing. Um, There's a lot of ways to get out there. Networking is key. I like to network. That's my thing. I'm just starting to read for our work week. I love it. I'm also investing in my business for my business to grow. Honestly, the biggest struggle I've been having is looking at a printer that I can afford. Plus, They've been on high demand like out of stock, and I finally found one. Okay, Quill is good. Check out Quill. Office Depot. When I do Office Depot, the ones local to me, I usually just call. You know, we give away printers. I call, and if the one that's local to me doesn't have it, they can check surrounding stores, and then they, they can hold it for me. I can pay for it. They can hold it until I can get it or, like, they ship it to me kind of thing. So I was doing that. I love it. Yes. I'm trying them up, Robin. I am. Um... Where do you get your, okay, that's for not for me. Hmm. I'm going to the Amazon grant out. Okay, put, okay, Empire Builders, got it, got it. I get the emails, but on the private YouTube account, I cannot like or view. Congratulations on all you share. Oh, you're welcome. I'm not sure. So I don't know about YouTube settings. That's not, I mean, I don't know if YouTube's not working. You might want to reach out to YouTube. I'm not sure about like notifications and stuff. Should we have received the thank you email for investing in the financial service? Seems like a really huge oversight. No, so you should have gotten a confirmation email. And so once the founders level um, closes, you'll get an email. So probably in like two weeks at the latest, you'll get a whole email with next steps and what to do and things like that. Um, I've been watching a, for a while and I'm applying with my state as I'm watching this, but not sure if I need a business name, phone number, wait. But not sure if I need a business name, phone number to file for my state, or can I change it later? So when you apply for your commission, you're using your own name. You're not putting in a business name. Your commission is issued to you as a person. Um, oh, good. Felicia's using SCORE right now. Can you use Ron for estate docs such as wills, trust the POAs? Typically, no. Typically, no. Um, can you? Yeah, I, I would stay away from it, but typically, no. You check with your state, but typically, no. Can you show a snippet of what a business card should look like? I wish I had my purse beside me. I could show you my business card. Um, my purse is not here. I have old business cards. I don't like this design, but I can show you my old cards. So these are my old cards. Mine look better now. This is my old cards that I had when I first started. So. Da -da -da. 
And it basically had my name, my picture, if necessary, company name, my, my little slogan, my website, my email, my phone number, and then my social handles on the back. Um, I do try to speak the facts for you guys. I'm never able to catch a last from beginning. Can anyone advise if she offers training for online notary? I do at notarysnotary.com. And I have a book on Amazon. Some of you guys have gotten your book off Amazon already. The Ultimate Wrong Guide that we were just talking about. This book right here. The Ultimate Wrong Guide. Oh, let me see if I can get this banner off here. The Ultimate Wrong Guide is available on Amazon. You can go and go grab your copy. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. We also have an e-notary training at notarytonotary.com that you can take remote online notary training that will help you build your e-notary business as well. And that is the link to that book on Amazon. And get that out of here. Let's see. Okay. Um, I'm almost at the bottom, y'all. Hold on. Just finished the closing. Now in the live. Have we touched on the pay scale yet? Nope. We're about to talk about it. I'm a particular age and refuse to be left behind. I love it. Should we have, okay, I saw that. How much are the KBA fees? It varies by state. I'm in Alabama. How can, how can you use, how can you assist me? We have rent similarities, but the signer sends you paperwork after you witness it. Okay, so you can use it for rent. Um, you can use it for rent, but really you should be able to use, we, you should be able to do Ron soon if you can't do it in Alabama. I'm not sure about Alabama. I have to check and see if um, Alabama has Ron. I think they do, but I have to verify. When am I coming to Pennsylvania? Me as a person on the platform. So we're going to be in all 50 states by the end of 2023. Um, only the states that don't have application processes for um, e-notary platforms, we can go in pretty quickly. But some states have an application process that you have. we have to um, apply for and be a coming approved vendor. So if your state has an application process for vendors, then we have to go through that. If they don't, then we can just come right in your state. Um, so the processing fees waive, but platform fees in the silver level. So in the silver level, that's like a little typo. Don't worry about that. There's no fees except for KBAs. So on the silver level, you're not paying platform or processing fees, but you will be paying for your KBAs. Um, we will let send out a schedule for when we're launching in each state when we get closer to launch. We don't have that schedule yet. I just know that we have it set to go Virginia, um, Texas, and Florida first. Will the platform assign us customers like other platforms do? Yes, yeah, so the platform is hybrid. So it's a platform where you can come on and we give you work from our clients, and then you can also use the platform for your own clients. So it's a hybrid a platform. So it's a dependent and an independent. It's a hybrid well how can we beta test if we don't live in your state because it's not the beta test is not you actually completing remote online notarizations because it's testing the platform so it's like a software platform you just log in and try it's like it's like if adobe says hey guys come try out this new feature we have it doesn't matter you just, you just go on the platform and try it and just say oh I like this feature. I don't like this feature. This feature works. This feature doesn't work. But it's not like you actually working. Like we're not, you're not actually working on the platform until the platform launches in spring. So when the platform launches, if you're in the founder circle, you'll convert into like in the platform. You can use it. You can um, get work from it. If when we launch, if you're not in the founder circle, you just apply to be on the platform. And then it's the same way you do like secure signings or doc verify. You just use it how you would use any other platform if you're not in the founder circle. Does the digital seal come with the founder circle pack? Just no, it does not. Um, thank you, Natanya. You so sweet, darling. There are not payment plans. What we were doing, we were sending out invoices to some people who requested it. And so what the invoice would do is basically it allows you to make payments on it. But the key I want you guys to remember is I don't want you guys to get confused. The invoice allows you to make payments because when we first launched, people were saying, can they pay like every week? And so I said, the only way we could do that is if we send you an invoice and then like we use PayPal for our invoicing. And if we send you an invoice for $1,000, like let's say you pay $250 one week, $250 one week, $250 one week, that's fine. But just remember, when we close the platform out, it doesn't matter where what you requested. It closes out where you've actually paid up to. Okay. Um... You said, I'll take that Amrock order. Honey, you can have it because I can't do it. I got so much going on right now. 
I, I wish I could. I, I was talking to Nakia about that. I said, I miss doing long closures. They was the funs. I still try to slip one in there every now and then because it's fun. I really enjoy it. Um, do you suggest having your LLC before creating a Google business page? You don't have to. What KBS system are you using? Um, that's something that we're not going to talk about right now. Um, just because there's certain things about the platform that we don't, we're not going to say until we launch. Um, just so, you know, you got to keep the competitive edge, you know, can you show us a snippet of what a business card was? Oh, I saw that. I saw that. Did someone else ask me the same thing? This was just my card, but it's an old card. It's an old card. I don't use that same card anymore, but it was one of my old cards, something just simple. And then I had my, uh, social media on the back. I didn't know anything acknowledging my joining. Not sure why. You should have gotten an email. Email me, Nabiha. Email me um, to info. Actually, I'm in info right now. So email me at info at notary to notary. Now I'll verify that we have you. Um, yeah, info at notary to notary.com. And I'll verify that we have you, honey bun. Uh, all right, let's see. I have it. I have both. I got mine. Look at you. Tonight at six is our free Ron training. You have to have registered before. It is closed. We have over like a thousand people that are in this Ron training. So we did have to close it out because the platform wouldn't allow us to have any more than that, any more users. So it's a thousand people in there tonight that are ready to get on with this Ron. I love it. Um, Got the wrong book, California. Did they pass, Melissa? Did they pass the legislation? I didn't stay up on it. I know there was pending legislation that they were supposed to start in January. It was January of 2023. I didn't I didn't catch up on if they voted on it or not. How do you obtain an online commission? It depends on your state. Um, it depends on your state. Some states don't have an application process. Some states do. As long as it isn't tomorrow. Do you recommend notaries to have an attorney? What's a good way to get one? Um... I mean, to have an, I recommend people as an individual to have a family attorney. Um, I guess it just depends on where you are. And it also depends on where you are. Um, we talk about that more so like in uh, Empire Builders about um, like having a family accountant, having a family attorney, you know, you know, having those kind of things in place just in case you have like people who are experts in certain fields that, you know, can answer questions for you. But if you mean just in terms of your notary business, uh, you might not need a whole attorney for that. Um, yeah. Um, I'm in California. Do you know if they passed it for Ron? I've been crossing. Okay, that's for Melissa. Who had a Melissa to tell us? Um, I'm in Maryland, but as long as I'm notarizing a document for use in Virginia, I will still be able to use the platform from home, right? So Maryland has a, claw, a law, which hopefully they will change, that you have to, e-notary platforms have to be in existence and operating for three years before they can be applied to be on in Maryland. So Unless they change that law, um, we can't be in Maryland for three years. So I'm not sure. But hopefully they'll change it. Some states have laws. Some states have been changing a lot of laws when it comes to Ron. But we just got to wait and see what happens. Um, it's like a test site. Exactly. Okay. I'm, I'm still going up to the job because they were paying me to take my test. My office still had my name on the window. All my pictures and stuff were untouched. I went to my bonus like a week before Christmas. They had me taking money out of my check. No one said anything, but other employees got their check. I went up there and I was like, I'll be back soon. I said, work here, but I'm still on disability. And the lady was like, no, you don't. I was like, well, okay, okay. Uh, I was going through a SS, but I, right now, once I can say the wrong thing, whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready. I'm nervous, but I'm ready to start. Can we do wrong if your particular state doesn't have wrong legislation yet? You can't do it if in your state, you can be do a commission and drive across the border to Virginia and do it. But you have to be physically in that state that you're commissioned in. So if you got dual commission, you could go. If you're like close to the border, you could do that. But you have to be in that state of wrong approval and commission to do that. Okay. And don't think you slick because your digital certificate tracks your IP address and you will get in trouble. Okay, make sure you're in your commission state. Awesome, D. Welcome to the platinum circle, baby. I'm ready for the um the training tonight too. I need to get I need to get the wait. I had the wrong book, but I need to get the book for making one one a thousand. Yeah, so that's on Amazon too. How to make a thousand dollars because of Notary Public. Just go to Amazon and just um search for Necessary and you'll see it. OK, Nabia, don't forget to email me. I just see a bunch of emails come through and I didn't see yours. You can do it in a, in a minute. It's fine. I just don't want to forget because um, I'm at the computer. So catch me while I'm, while I'm sitting here, baby. Um, should I should we 
So should we get the seal once you launch? What seal? What seal are you talking about, honey? We apply for be available in Washington State. We are working on being all 50 states. I understand that, but I'm dual, dual commission in Virginia. Oh, yeah, so you'll be fine. You can do it. You can use the platform in Virginia, Nabia. As long as you're in Virginia, you'll, you're fine. You can be in Maryland. I can send you the information if you like. Okay, are you joining me? So you know I am, Rose. I'm already working on that, baby. Oh, sorry. But that's a lot. So Mismo, Mismo is actually a compliance certification that e notary platforms do not have to have, but it's highly recommended. And more. it's like how, when you're in when you're a notary signing agent, you got to get the NNA certification. It's not required, but it's highly recommended. So Mismo is not required, but it's highly recommended because a lot of lenders are switching over to requiring their e notary platforms to have that certification. So we are going through that process to get that certification. Yes. Um, I wanted a dual commission, Florida and New York. They said I had to live and have a New York address. You do, but you have to meet the requirements of whatever state you're going for. Uh, we do not provide digital seals. You can get one at any time, whenever you want one. I recommend giving my Ident Trust. I'll put the link for that in the in the chat. Identtrust.com. Okay. Well, I know that's about the clients for the platform. Yes, we have. It's a hybrid. So we give you plat. We give you. What in the world? We give you work and you can um, bring your own clients on. We love you, Vanessa. Rose is my notary buddy here in Maryland. I emailed you. Yay! I see you now, baby. I see you now. Um, with the I notarized, do on do with I notarized, you only pay for one person as a user. Yes. Can I have me and my brother as a notary signing agent business? No. Be a founder? No. So and that's a question people ask too. I had people ask me, could they sign that signing service up? Honey, y'all trying to bankrupt us before we even start. No, you cannot sign a signing service up. That you know how much how much that would be? It well, if your signing service is is, is killing it. Um, no, if you're gonna sign up, you have to do it on an individual basis. So it's each individual person um would be a founder. Okay. Is the one-on-one -on -one coaching still available? Yes, if you go to notary to notary.com. My daughter's going to get me because she just cooked for me. And she was like, Mom, you will come eat this food. I am. I'm, all right, let's do a few questions. And then we're going to, um, she came and wrote me a sign. Look at her sign. She made a special, a special breakfast. I know it's at 4 o'clock, but she had a recipe she wanted to make. So I had to go downstairs in a second to eat her breakfast that she cooked. Okay, let's hit a few questions really quick. Um, you will not get an e-notary seal from us tonight. The free training is a free training, a two-hour free training. We're going to talk about Ron. OK, if you want to eat notary seal from us, you can buy one. You can send an email to info at notary to notary .com. It's eight dollars and ninety nine cents. Or you can join the e-notary training program at notary to notary .com and you get a complimentary one. OK. All right. So we want to talk about really quick. Can I get your feedback on three things? Three things that are so simple. OK, the first one's really easy. And I just want to get your opinion on it. So you guys know lately um, a lot of platforms have been asking you. And this is about when notaries get paid. Okay, so when you're looking to get paid, it's a, this first one's a really simple question. So don't say, Vanessa, that was really easy because it's an easy one. Do you prefer to put in your routing and account number or do you prefer to use your bank login information? So how many of you guys have seen that? Like now a lot of um, payment platforms and ways to pay, they're not, they're switching over from asking you for your routing and account number to just um, your syncing to your bank account with your, user name and login so like a really popular um platform is like plaid they do that you might have seen that um but basically what do you feel most comfortable with do you feel more comfortable you logging in like syncing and logging with your email and your password or with your actual routing and account number thoughts thoughts it'd be cool if you put why because then it kind of helps me kind of think it through i have a preference I prefer routing account number, but um, I don't know. I think I just feel like me personally, I feel like logins is like, why are you doing my login? Like, I feel like you could get in and change some stuff, right? If you have this a routing and account number, I feel like you could get in and take my money, but you can't change things. Like, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So it would have to be one of the two. So because you're, so this is how you're going to get paid. So you're either going to get paid direct deposit with, you can, no, period. There's only direct deposit. Right now, it's only, we're not doing checks. No checks. No, no, baby. 
It's 2022. We're not doing checks. So it's only direct deposit. Um, and you can do... Um, okay, let's see. I'm seeing a lot of routing and account number. I don't like either in my login info. I hate it. Okay. I see a little bit of login info, but I'm seeing mostly routing and account number. I don't want to use login info. I like to know who I get my bank info to. Okay. Is it really... Is this really a big question out there? Is it really a big question? It's, it's not a huge question, but it's like, I just want to know a preference. And so it's basically so we can make the platform, it's a platform built for notaries by notaries. So it was a question that was posed to me and I was like, I don't know, let me ask. So um, my bank wouldn't do Plaid anyway, security, I guess, writing an account number. Um, it's not going to be on YouTube. It's going to be one time. Catch it. There's no replay. It's just come in, catch me for two hours, catch me outside. How about that? Y'all know something about score. I'm sorry. They need to issue a card and put the payment on the card. With direct deposit, writing account number. Um, uh, well, tonight's train. Okay, I saw that. Is it? It's safe or too much going on out there? I see what you mean, though. Ah! So Ron passed to appropriation. Sounds like it's moving forward. Okay. I say writing account because they do not have all the banks listed for you to choose from. That's true. That is true. That is true. And then some people reuse the same password across multiple accounts. That's true. That's why I say I don't like people. I don't like. Okay. So it sounds like most everybody is saying routing an account number. Exactly. It's like they're tracking you on Plaid. Okay. All right. So we're going to routing an account that thing. It sounds like everybody's saying routing an account, which I figured. Well, I, I figured that for me. You sound like checks in the mail in my email. I know, but we ain't doing checks no more, baby. That's too much work. We need direct deposit. We need things to be like quick, quick, quick. Okay, writing an account number. Then the other question, hold on, let me pull them because I have both them down. So we can make sure we're all on the same page. And then these are just some basics. And I know it's going to give me like a, a wide array of answers. So I'll just kind of get some feels for it. Um, now, when it comes to notaries being paid, first is do you have a preference on, man, I miss it. Nakia, what's up, sugar to book it all? Um, do you have a preference on um, when you get paid? So like, what do you think? Should it be like um, every two weeks, 30 days? What do you guys think? What would be the best? What would be really cool? So I'm thinking if you're working, um, if you, and if, if you work on your independent side, you can pay whenever you do your own work. If you work with us, I was thinking like once a week. That's what I was thinking. I feel like that's good enough time for you to, oh, this is the other question. Boom. This is the other question. Um, so we were thinking weekly, but then there is the option that you guys know how, um, you um okay so you have fee to use the platform right most platforms have either monthly or annual fee right so let's say you're on the monthly plan do you want the option to have your fees taken from your profit so let me explain so let's say you're on the platform and you're a hybrid right so you're doing work for us and you're doing your own work so you know when you do your own work you have fees so let's say you've done five five notarizations and you have like a hundred dollars in your pot to go to you that Friday, right? But let's say you did two e notarizations and you're not in the founder circle, right? And you have to pay those fees. And let's say your fees ended up being twenty dollars. Do you want the do you want to have the ability to take that twenty dollars from the profit that you were going to have, and then? So like if, instead of getting $100, you get $80 back that week. And then you can have a card on file. That's your backup card. So the backup card is if let's say you don't do any work that week, but you use the platform and you, you know, you had fees for KBA or whatever the case is, then we just run your card for your KBAs and your um, fees. You see what I'm saying? So it's like it gives you that option to take from your, work done. I thought that would be pretty cool, but I didn't know what you guys think. So I'd rather someone just have access to one account now. Okay. 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 
You said, no, I need to at least see my cash first, then I'll pass it on. Okay, I need to see my cash first, baby. Hold on. Bi-weekly, yes, take it out. Next day pay. I was thinking about that, about having that kind of option to have next day pay. But I got to see. It was definitely something I was thinking about. Um, Once a week is good. I don't like having to wait 30 days. Me neither. That was a biggie for me. We not, I already said we're not doing no 30 days. Take the fees out and track that there's show. That's what we're saying. Like you, So you'll see it on your dashboard. Like what your fees were, you can see what gets deducted. That's why I'm going to find so if I weren't, I would want to say when the fees are taken out. Keep it separate for tracking purposes. Take it out. My fees taken out. No, I want to pay a monthly bill with a full invoice that itemizes my fees. I'm okay with carry coming out of the profits because it's a part of the single job, but the other fees should be built separately. Yes, you can take it out. Take it out before. This is like a split. I'm getting like a split here. Or what we could do is we could set it up as an option where it's like you can set it as a you can choose to have the fees come out of your work, the pot of money that you have. And then you can uh, or you can choose to opt out and keep them separate. That's an option, too. No, we are not taking no taxes out because y'all are 1099s. You can work. You can do with your own taxes. You are not employees of iNotarize. <laughs> I have enough employees. I don't need any more. We already like right now. I told you who y'all heard what I said. Um, I was said every y'all y'all know Derek right. Derek Hall is my accountant. He helped me do the tax management class. He uh, messaged me today. I said it only only now because every other month he called me. I'm like, hey dad. This one I'm like, Lord, leave me alone. I know he like you ready to hit these taxes. Like, Lord, baby, no, not really. If I had to choose, no, no. Can I get an extension? Can we wait a little minute? No. <sighs> but yeah. So anyway, um, I think that's a good option with weekly deductions. I like the option. You are a genius. Oh, thank you. Offer a radio button. What's a radio button? I want to know what that is. What's the radio button? I'm curious. And I'm thinking too, and this is what we're thinking about, is having it as levels. So having also like your your um, your fees for using it to vary by um, how much you use the platform. So like the fees for somebody who only uses it once would be lower versus someone who's doing a whole lot of volume. So we're thinking about having levels too. Um, as far as what the fees would be to use the platform, we're trying to make it so it's kind of fair, like like not to call names. So there's a company out there that the fee is pretty substantial, regardless of how much you use. And so for a new notary, it kind of is like um, put you in it puts you in the hole because you're not really you know you don't have a lot of work yet. And so we're trying to figure out a way to do that too. So where it has the the a new notary can use it and not have to break the bank trying to establish their e-notary business too. Does that make sense? Um, will there be live support? Possibly. Um, you have four and five options for an answer. The radio button allows you to give the sign of the option to choose. Button you click. What type of radio button? I was distracted, not sure what the button would be for. Oh, I think I have to see it. I'm a little confused about this radio button. It's to click an option on or off, or sometimes like the ticking a box. Oh, okay, okay. I have to see it. How would you handle the fees not being paid if you keep them separate? Well, you have to pay the fees to use the platform. You wouldn't be able to use it if you didn't pay the fee. I was thinking about doing tears. I think that'd be good. And then we're trying to figure out, too, the levels for um, each notarization. Um, and that's one thing. So there's a piece that I can't really tell you guys because it kind of lets the cat out of the bag because we have a special feature that I can't tell you guys. But we're trying to figure out, like, what the rates would be in general for, like, because different states have different rates, of course. So we have to kind of go by what your state says, what you can charge. But then also like having different rates 
determining the rates for like loan different loan closings and then also we know we want to do like um, when you come on the platform have you in different levels so like when you first start of course is general annuity work um, as you improve there will be like training and an exam on the um, platform as well to not exam like a training and an interview to make sure that you know what you're doing before we put you on like before you get on loan before you get on general annuity work you have to go through that and there's another one before you get through um, to business contracts and loan closings too so um, there's a quite a it's a, a lot of different features that are on there that you'll be able to go through. But we just want to make sure we're looking at the, the tiers. Because one thing I know we want to do is have pre-tagging as an option for lenders. So that way, how many of you guys have done a RON and you had to, for a loan closing, you had to pre-tag the whole thing? That's annoying. <laughs> so try to find a way to get around that. Um um, just like looking at options that are available. Um, so we don't have to, how many of you guys know what I'm talking about when I say pre-tagging? That's annoying. It's cool when it's like a couple pages, but a whole loan package can take a while. Um, and so we're looking at that, that too, something that we're trying to, trying to address. Did I hear you say Florida will launch when notarized in the spring? So when we launch in the spring, it launched in Virginia, and then we're going to launch next in Texas and Florida. Um, Nabia knows it's a whole situation. Um, so we're working on finding a solution for that. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I know how we're going to do it. We just want to make sure that it works. Um, so, yeah, just wait for it. It's gonna, the platform is actually going to do a lot. And when it launches, you're going to be like, Vanessa, why didn't you tell us? I have to have the competitive advantage. But it does a lot. It actually does a lot. I'm really excited for it. And I'm really like, it's cool. Like, it does a whole lot. It does a whole lot. And I want to, I really want to tell y'all, but Luke will um, be really upset because he'd be like, stop saying stuff. Okay. I probably said too much. Like, <laughs> So, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, when do you think you'll be in New Jersey? I don't know, baby. I'm, I'm going to get a schedule out closer to when we're about to launch. I'll get a schedule out for when we're going to be in each state. But it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Um, oh, yeah, because it's sometimes we might think that we know what's best, but it's so much better to get input. Like, and I say it all the time, like I have um students that'll email me and say, Oh, you should do this or you should do that, or sometimes they'll be mad and say, I can't believe that you did this or you don't have this. And I'm like, I'm sorry, and I'm not upset because that's a good idea. Let me implement that. I'd like people to tell to help me. And you know, like I need all the guidance that I can get. I need you to help me, help me, help you, Luda. Right. Tell me. Tell me. I need to know. If I have a booger, let me know. Right. I'm that kind of person. So if you see me cutting up or you see me doing something wrong, don't be like, oh, just you know how people they don't want to tell you. Tell me. Let me know. So I'm I'm always open to to insight, right? Um Okay. All right, y'all. We're going to slip and slide because I have to get ready for the, the, the Ron training tonight. Um, I do. I wish I could stay on here with you guys a little bit longer, but I do have to get ready for the Ron training. It starts tonight at 6, so I have to prep for that and um, make sure everybody gets their access links. And uh, we're going to have a good old time tonight. Go get something to eat and come back, and we're going to rock and roll this thing. How many of you guys got the links? Got the, I mean, not the links, got the, um, the uh, tickets for the Ron training that's tonight? I'm sure most of you did. Um, There's a lot of you guys going to be in there tonight. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really exciting. And we're going to talk about RON. It's the introductory RON training. So it's RON 101. Of course, we're going to start from the beginning. People who have no idea what RON is. So we're going to talk about everything RON. See you tonight, honey. And then the next thing we have coming up is the Loan Doc Masterclass. That's coming up. That's the last event for this month. And then we have Launch RON coming up February 5th. So that's on the website too. You can go ahead and get in that. Um, all right, y'all. I will see you guys luego. Be awesome on purpose. And until next time, happy signing. Dum, 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 dum. Hey guys, have you had a chance to get a copy of my new book, The Ultimate Ron Guide? 
If you are ready to build a remote online notary business, then this book is what you need. In this book, I give you all the information that you need to know in order to build a successful remote online business, no matter what state you're in, as long as your state authorizes remote online notarizations. Head on over to Amazon today and get your copy. You'll be glad you did.